Hey, how's it going out there, YouTube? Sean from Fairweather Cards. Welcome back. Uh, so for today's video, I'm going to be highlighting some of the NPB Hall of Famers that I've recently picked up, added to my collection. But first, I just want to highlight these four cards here. You know, with football season starting up, uh, decided to pull out two of the Chicago uh, Bears great running backs, uh, Mr. Walter Payton and Mr. Gale Sayers. Peyton's rookie, and that is Gail Sayers' rookie. Please remind me if it's not, but I just I love these two cards, especially the Sayers. I love the 69 tops with the vibrant backgrounds. Um, just spectacular. And then when you flip the card over, you know, it's the green and black background. Just such a such an iconic card for me. So um, and then, of course, you know, Sweetness himself. Uh, I've had some of his rookies in the past, and I seem to have always traded them or sold them off. And, uh, you know, just I saw this at a great price and just had to have it. So added Mr. Uh, Walter Payton to the collection. Just a really, really neat card. This one, unfortunately, is just a three. Let me get it in the, the uh, view here. Just a three. Uh, there is a wrinkle here on the top corner. And then also, you know, the corners are bad. Uh, condition it isn't the best, but it, I think it presents fairly well, at least for my liking. The other two cards here are both 54 Bowman. And uh, this is Mr. Luke Easter with the Cleveland Indians. I think this card is just spectacular. Just a beautiful looking card. Love this 54 set. I had the Willie Mays and unfortunately sold it oh, about two years ago and regretted it ever since. Um, you know, maybe one day I'll, I'll try to put the set together. I don't know. And then uh, here's Mr. Bob Feller over here in the corner. And just, in my opinion, a classic, classic uh, pose of Mr. Feller there in the dugout. You know, he's always smiling. I got to see him. Uh, he was a... a ambassador for the Cleveland Indians and came to one of their minor league teams and I just remember his smile it just just a, a classic classic photo of, of Mr. Beller so let's go ahead and get into those uh uh Japanese cards here from the NPB league first I just here's a current player this is Muntaka Murakami so if you've been following the you know baseball news lately you know, you know that judge is is getting ready to you know pass uh, Roger Maris, or he might maybe has already. Um, you know, my, Roger Maris's American League record of sixty one home runs. Well, Murakami uh, is mashing a lot of balls in Japan, and this is his Chrome, uh, so two thousand twenty one tops Chrome issue car. But uh, he's at like 55 or 56 home runs. What's exciting about Murakami is just he's really, really young. Plays third base and very, very young. So, you know, I think his future is bright. Uh, here's a BPM from 2020. Now his rookie year is from 2018. And I do have his Cowby rookie, but I could not find it. So uh, I'll have to keep looking for it. But uh, yeah, um, he's, he's kind of an exciting, exciting player. So, well, next, uh, let's talk about uh, this card here. This is a recent pickup. This is Mazanori Murakami. Now, if you've ever read the book Mashi, you know uh, Mr. Murakami, you know his story. For those of you who have not, highly recommend that book. But uh, Murakami, he was the first Asian-born player to play in the major leagues here in America. And that was back in 1964, and he also played in 65. Interesting story about him. You know, he wanted to stay here, but uh, it was kind of a legal battle going on, and he ended up pitching back in Japan. Uh, you know, did real well here in America. He does not have many Japanese ball cards, and he only has the one tops card here in America, which is the 65 tops where it has him and uh, Dick Estelle on there. Now, this is one of his cards. This is a TCMA, I think, from the last year he played. Uh, yeah, he played in 78, and this was issued 79. So I think that's kind of cool, uh, Mr. Murakami. Now, he also, I believe, has a 67 uh, Kabaya Leaf card. I've never seen one. I would love to see that card if you have it. Um, so yeah, not too many cards. Uh, there just wasn't many cards coming out of Japan at that time, but love his story. And I saw that card and just had to add it. So these next players here, they're all hall of famers. 
These are just cheap Minkos that I was able to pick up off of eBay for about a couple bucks each. Uh, I'll just show the back here. Just kind of a neat card. This is Mr. Koba. Now, he was just a, uh, you know, he was an infielder. I believe infielder. Um, I've been doing some research on these next four guys. I just started because I just got these cards. But, uh, you know, he's only about a 250 hitter in his career. So, really, just kind of an average ball player. Uh, he did coach and did real well coaching. Uh, well, I should, I, let me let me take a step back. He was he was an average coach. Uh, in fact, I think he had a losing record, but he was a good ambassador for for Japanese baseball. Uh, he did a lot to promote the game there in Japan. So uh, he was elected into you know the Hall of Fame there for that reason. So there's a nice card, fifty nine Minko, uh, Mr. Koba. Uh, here's Hasegawa, who was a pitcher, um, you know, did real well for a couple of years, uh, I believe had a pretty long career. I, I don't remember exactly how many, how many years, but what was interesting about Mr. Hasegawa is he was kind of small in stature. I think about five, six, five, seven, and only about 125, 130 pounds. So that's a, that's a neat hall of fame card here. Akiyama is, uh, Noboru is another pitcher. And, you know, again, I don't know too much. You know, I'm just learning about them. But these Minkos were, were, were fairly cheap, a couple bucks each. And so I couldn't pass them up. And uh, one last one, just kind of a, a neat card. Now, this gentleman here, um, Naken Ishii. Uh, he was a 300 hitter and I think had something close to a thousand RBIs, maybe more. I, I could, could be uh, forgetting the numbers, but, uh, he, he was a pretty spectacular player or a pretty good player. So, uh, happy to add those to my collection, give me something to research here in the coming months. Uh, here's a recent purchase that I just love. This card is beautiful. This is Mazaichi Kaneda. And if you don't know much about uh, Japanese baseball, this is Kaneda is is you know kind of a, the American Cy Young. Okay, uh, Mr. Kaneda leads the Japanese league in wins with over 400 career wins, strikeouts over or close to 4,500. Also, interestingly, he was kind of a, a hothead, if you will, or, or had a temper. So he was also, or he used to lead the league, and most times ejected from the ball game. Uh, he was one heck of a pitcher. He was scouted, and many U.S. teams, uh, major league teams, wanted him to come play for for their team here in America. Uh, but uh, you know, he just he stayed true to to his home, and uh, you know, he he wanted to uh, pitch in in Japan. Um, he was of Korean descent, which is which is kind of neat. But uh, yeah, he, he wanted to stay there in Japan, and uh, which which is which is pretty cool. Uh, Goodwill Games, the Yankees went over and, and played, and uh, Mr. Canetta struck out Mickey Mantle three times, which is kind of cool, you know. So he was he was a great pitcher, really great pitcher. Um, I guess if you had to compare him to a a, a player back in the day when they when they were playing. He was the Japanese version of Warren Spawn, if you will. So, uh, Now, this last card I'll spend a little bit of time on. I just love here. This is Hiroshi um, Oshita, and uh, this is a 52 Yamakatsu, black and white. Uh, just the mark on the back here. Uh, just a wonderful, wonderful card. Now, if you don't know much about uh, Oshita, uh, he was... A very very good ball player, over 300 career hitter, uh, had quite a few home runs, over 300 home runs, 1500 or so RBIs. Uh, so he was very very popular, and this was during the time he he really started playing back in the late 40s, early 50s, and when, when he gained his notoriety there in Japan. So a lot of national pride that went with him, of course, and. Uh, you know, he's just he's just a really, really interesting player. Um, you know, at the time, his popularity, it was either him or Tetsuharu Kawakami back in the early 50s were the most popular 
position players, you know, if you will. So, you know, comparative to like at the time, you think early 50s, you start to think Mickey Mantle, you know, here in America. And I bring up that comparison because this is a 52 card that I'm holding here in my hand. What's really interesting about it is, you know, I mean, just it's beautiful, but, you know, there's this mark on the back. And please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not in any way saying I'm an expert here, but uh, those marks, typically these cards were prize cards. And if you got a mark like the three on there, that means you won the third prize. So, you know, PSA, when they graded this, you know, they, of course, saw the mark. But this is more than likely a prize mark, which is really kind of cool. And just to see that this is a seven here of the player who had for his country who was as popular at the time as, say, Mickey Mantle here in America. And it's the same year as Mickey Mantle's, you know, 52, you know, famous tops card. I don't know. I just I just love this card. Just love it. So probably spent a little more time than I should have on it. But uh, I just that's a spectacular card. And I'll leave you here with just a few other of Mr. Oshita's uh, cards that I have. So here's another one. This is just a bromide from uh, 1947. And I've shown I've shown these before. I just think that's a really neat card. This is by far my favorite uh, Japanese ball card that I have. This one's a late 40s bromide. But there you have him and the catcher and the umpire with the stands, pack stands. There's another really cool Menko from 1952-53. And then a couple more Menkos just to round it out. These are from the 40s. And another 40s Menko. This one is circular. And the final one, another 40s Menko. So that's all I got for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, sorry it went a little long, but uh, you know, please comment. Tell me what you think. And uh, if you have any uh, Japanese uh, ball cards, I'd sure love to see them as I'm just enjoying uh, collecting these. So anyways, y'all take care. Thanks for watching.